What's good, YouTube? It's your boy, D-Riff. Hey, today we got another special video. Today we're going to be reacting to moments that were not supposed to happen at WrestleMania. First time across channel, make sure to hit the thumbs up. Make sure to subscribe because we're almost at 5K. And I won't be able to hit that 5K without you, so continue to go crazy. Let's continue to push for that 5K. But look, if you don't subscribe, you probably want to because it is WrestleMania week. And I will be making a big WrestleMania video because I will be at WrestleMania. So, um, yeah, if you don't subscribe, you might want to. Without further ado, let's get into these moments that were not supposed to happen. Number 10, Shane McMahon tears his quad, WrestleMania 39. WrestleMania 39 featured a completely unexpected return as the prodigal son Shane McMahon returned to WWE to challenge The Miz. McMahon received a hero's welcome from the audience, yet this applause quickly turned to concern when McMahon was lying in a heap on the mat. It turned out that during a leapfrog attempt, the former European champion had tore his quad. An injury of this magnitude happening during a live WrestleMania broadcast put WWE in a very difficult position. Yet thanks to quick communication, WWE improvised and they had Snoop Dogg quickly punch The Miz and follow it up with a people's elbow. WWE and their talent must be prepared for anything and the aftermath of McMahon's injury couldn't have been handled any better. Yeah, he handled nine, it good. The Blade Jobs WrestleMania 8 during the early 90s, WWE had a strict no blood the policy and that this applied to all rest. That was the weakest chair shot I've ever seen in my life. During the early 90s, WWE. That was so weak. Had a and it's a plastic chair, so he could have hit him a little harder than that. Strict no blood policy and this applied to all wrestlers across the board. However, when it came to WrestleMania 8, two wrestlers decided a little bloodshed would enhance their respective matches. First, during Bret Hart's match with Roddy Piper, Hart bladed, and he did such a convincing job with making it look like he was busted open in a legitimate manner that he avoided a fine and any punishment. But the same couldn't be said for Ric Flair, as the prone blader decided to blade during his WWE title showdown versus the Macho Man. It was so obvious what Flair had done that Vince McMahon fined both men a reported figure of $500,000. Wow, According to that's, the late back then that's a lot of money too. 500,000 back then is a lot of money. Lani Poffo during an interview with Inside the Ropes, Flair is still a lot of money. In genuine heat from McMahon, yet Poffo admits the crowd loved the incorporation of blood into the title matchup. Rick caught some legitimate heat from Vince McMahon for blading during the match and was fined. Things had changed since I did that blade job for Andre the Giant. The company didn't want the boys blading at that point, but Rick knew how fans reacted to seeing blood staining his blonde hair and did it anyway. Vince was mad, but the fans loved it. Number 8. The Big Show Spot Gets Cut Short, WrestleMania 33 For the most part, the Andre the Giant Memorial Battle Royal at WrestleMania 33 was a typical battle royal. However, the early elimination of the Big Show did come as a huge surprise, as Big Show was one of the biggest names in the match. It was reported at the time that Big Show was unhappy backstage as he was supposed to have an extended spot in the match with Braun Strowman and the spot was reportedly cut short by numerous wrestlers failing to let the moment breathe. Former WWE star Sean Waltman aka X-Pac would discuss the blunder on his radio show and this is what Waltman had to say. Before the thing was even over, Big Show had a bunch of guys that were in the battle royal back in the back and he was going off. Really? Yeah, yeah I think it was over the stuff with him and Strowman. Mm -hmm. Cause they had a moment there, you know? And yeah. I think the moment got taken from him too quick. Number seven. I didn't even know X-Pac had a, had a radio show or podcast, whatever you want to call it. I met X-Pac. I got his autograph over here, actually. Let me see. Right here. a picture with him take a picture with him too i don't know where i'll put it but so i didn't hang it up yet but <laughs> i did meet xbox i talked to him a little bit asked him a couple questions you know some things I asked him if he was gonna be at wrestlemania he said he didn't know yet but man that's crazy i didn't know he had his own show i might have to listen to it dominic mysterio throws water at his sister wrestlemania 39 WrestleMania 39 saw Rey and Dominic Mysterio finally collide in a 1v1 matchup. The match lived up to expectations and it was a perfect match to bring an acclaimed rivalry to a close. Now an interesting fact about the WrestleMania 39 matchup is that Dominic went off script and threw the water at his sister. His unplanned spot was a great move as it took the intensity of the match to the next level and Deadly Dom himself offered some insight on the improvised spot during an appearance on the Ring of Wrestling show. 
I mean, I didn't know I was gonna throw a drink at my sister. I, I mean, I kind of walked down and I I saw her holding a cup and I was like, this dumbass is holding a cup. So I, I grabbed it and I was gonna drink it. I saw there was a little bit of water and I said, this is just a little bit. So I, I figured I'd throw it on her. But yeah, all, that, that was a blast. What, looking back at it now, I threw it with some with some force. She didn't expect that at all. So I think that's uh, it, it's a lot of fun, man. Hopefully I uh, I get to do some more stuff where I get to torture him because it's a blast, you know. I ha ain't his sister um about to become a wrestler too. I don't know if if it's true or not. I seen something about him his sister thinking to become a wrestler. That would be crazy. Number six, Raven almost cuts the power. WrestleMania 17. From top to bottom, everything on the WrestleMania 17 card came together to produce a beloved and celebrated pay per view event. One of the more underrated matches on the show saw Kane, Big Show, and Raven face off in a chaotic yet thrilling hardcore match for the hardcore title. One of the infamous spots in the match saw Raven drive a golf cart into a mesh fence wall backstage, and this wall covered the wires that powered the entire building. Raven was legitimately just a few inches away from cutting the power to the entire arena. Speaking of Fightful, the wrestling veteran gave his recollection of the incident. But I ruined the greatest spot in the history of WrestleMania. We were supposed to be driving and the big show choking while I was driving, and I was supposed to drive all around the building with Kane driving behind us in hot pursuit. What happened was that there was a fence that looked like a wall fence, so I thought if I drove into it and bounced off, it would look cool because I was getting choked by a 400 pound guy. Then I hit the fence, didn't get back anything, and I just fell off the curb. But the best part is, is that I came within millimeters of turning off the power in the entire building. Yo, imagine the if you would have turned the, the power off over the whole building, bro. Like, that would have been crazy, because it would have took a long time for that, for that power to come back up. Because you would have had somebody that had to come back out and fix that. That would have took a while. And it was live. That would have been... That would have been... Wow, people would have just been sitting up in the in the stands forever. I mean, who knows? It might have took an hour. It might have took 30 minutes. Maybe 10 minutes. But it would have took a while because if you didn't have those kind of technicians there, it would have, they would have had to come out there. Yeah, it would have been a bad day. Number 5, WrestleMania 24's Pyro Accident WrestleMania always has awe-inspiring pyro, yet in 2008 at WrestleMania 24, the pyro used for the pay-per-view went horrifically wrong. When The Undertaker had defeated Edge to become world champion during the main event, an extravagant pyro display would ensue, yet unfortunately these fireworks malfunctioned as the fireworks landed into a group of fans. It's believed that around 40 fans were injured and some of these fans suffered burns. Oh. Three fans left WrestleMania in an ambulance as a result of their injuries, and the backlash and media attention was so severe that WWE were forced to issue a statement. We're investigating the incident and doing everything we can to find out why it happened and to make sure it never happens again. While we apologize to anyone who was injured and or alarmed by this occurrence, we take solace in the fact that the reported injuries were minor. Number 4, Papa Shango. I ain't gonna lie. Y'all gotta give me some guap from that. I gotta give me some bread. I'm getting burnt. Y'all gotta give me some bread. Y'all gotta give me some bread, bro. No, I'm not letting that slide. We're going to court. You're not going to give me no money or some free tickets to the next WrestleMania? Y'all got to give me some money. Y'all got to give me tickets to something. And y'all won't have to worry about me. You give me tickets, I don't want no WWE Live tickets. I don't want no Raw tickets. And I don't want no SmackDown tickets. Definitely don't want no NXT tickets. You better give me some tickets to SummerSlam. The Royal Rumble or WrestleMania. If it ain't none of those and you don't give me no money, we going to court. You giving me something. If I got burnt, I got injured, you giving me something. Those timing <laughs> blunder, WrestleMania 8. The main event of WrestleMania 8 didn't exactly light the world on fire. The main event was a standard singles match between Hulk Hogan and Sid, and it ended in a DQ victory for Hogan. The match was incredibly lackluster, Man. especially when it comes to WrestleMania main events. The planned finish of the match was supposed to see Papa Shango break up a pin attempt from Hogan, yet Shango missed his cue, meaning that Sid had to kick out of a trademark Hogan leg drop. Charles Wright, who portrayed the spooky persona, discussed what went wrong during an interview with Schedule for Two Falls. The problem was, is that they knew that I was green, so they're like, don't go until we tell you to go. And so, 
they were probably for whatever reason, and I'm not going to say the person, but for whatever reason, I got late the queue late and went. So I didn't know. All I'm, I'm, I'm sitting at the curtain, literally like, like a track star, get ready to run, and it was a long ways, and I was probably 320 pounds, and I'm like, okay, we're gonna go. So they said, go, 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 bam, I went. So. Once I got there, I was a little, oh shit, what's going on? Because <laughs> I wasn't watching the monitors, I was kind of that. So, uh, but I never heard anything about it years. And I mean, years later, I'm now not wrestling. I'm doing autograph signings and stuff. And people are, hello, my wife. People are like, uh, hey, what happened here? I'm like, what do you mean, what happened? Well, you missed the cue. I'm like, no, I didn't. And I, I'm like, what do you mean? What do you mean? Number 3, a botched ending, WrestleMania 35. The women of WWE took center stage at WrestleMania 35 as Ronda Rousey, Becky Lynch and Charlotte Flair main evented the show. While seeing Lynch become dual champion in WWE was incredible, the botch finish did ultimately overshadow the epic moment. The match finish saw Rousey attempt to hit a Piper's pit on Lynch, yet this attempt was countered into a crucifix pin, and this managed to pin Rousey to the mat. The problem here was that this wasn't the planned finish and Rousey's shoulders were clearly up. It's unclear what was supposed to be the finish of the match as there are conflicting reports. But some reports at the time stated that Lynch was supposed to tap out Flair to then disarm her, while some reports note that Lynch was supposed to make Rousey submit. Number two, Mike Tyson goes off. I don't think that was a bot. That don't look like a. I mean, if it was a bot, nobody knows. While some reports note that Lynch was not something we're gonna to make remember. Rousey submit. Number two, Mike Tyson goes off script. WrestleMania 14. One of the most iconic moments of WrestleMania 14 it saw boxer Mike Tyson knock out Shawn Michaels. This was a scripted spot, yet the spot which saw Tyson place a Stone Cold t-shirt over HBK's face caused a ton of controversy. The spot in question was in the initial WrestleMania rundown, yet HBK believed the spot was disrespectful, so he insisted it was removed. Tyson ultimately decided to do the spot anyway, which naturally made HBK, who was notoriously problematic at the time, absolutely livid. The former WWE Champion was so angry that he attempted to confront Tyson at the post-show press conference and he had to be physically stopped by Shane McMahon. And number 1, Stone Cold's Blade Job, WrestleMania 13. The word masterpiece is thrown around a lot when it comes to pro wrestling, yet the match between Stone Cold Steve Austin and Bret Hart at WrestleMania 13 is an outstanding showcase of everything that is great about pro wrestling. The match featured a double turn and it was responsible for creating one of the most influential and popular babyfaces of all time in Stone Cold. The most well-known element of the match is Austin's bloodshed as, Austin, began, as yeah. Austin being covered in blood while screaming in pain is one of the main reasons the match connected with so many fans. Believe it or not, blood wasn't permitted for the match, as WWE had a strict no blood policy at the time. It was Hart's idea to deviate away from WWE's rulebook, and Hart offered a fascinating account on why he made the call during an appearance on Edge and Christian's podcast. I said you don't want to take any chances at WrestleMania. Trust me, let me do it. He trusted me. I remember one of the first things I learned in the business was to never let anyone do that to you, and Steve totally trusted me. I said trust me because I'll do it right. There could have been a lot of heat. I could have been in just as much trouble as Steve at that time. They had a no blood policy for a while and the toy companies and everybody were on Vince's ass. So I was like, just let's pretend it was an accident. What are they going to do? One thing's for sure, it made for an epic moment. Yeah, it, did. Have it, it definitely did make for a big moment that we definitely remember. Because I remember, y'all remember those, um, before wrestling comes on and they say don't try this at home, they used to be like they put their bodies, their career, their lives on the line. They're entertaining you. And tear their bodies apart. Da, 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 da. That was one of the pictures or one of the you know moments in that video. And I definitely remember that part. But look, if y'all got any other videos you want to react to in particular, or any other moments that y'all feel like should have been in this video, let me know. Cause maybe I'll do some research and look at it. But look, like this video, subscribe if you're new. Let me know your thoughts, man. It's your buddy Rim, man. I'm out.